So he sits down, and after he said, I want to leave over something that I'm missing, but it's distant as they are from 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 everything, from strange, from their mistress, give them something to take with them. So I told my uh, young man, I said, let me tell you what this day is all about, what it meant to our ancestors, to uh, parents, grandparents, what the film means exactly. I said, when the war ended, I said, there was a chaplain, Rabbi Lavazer, who checked into a hotel in Berlin. When he checked in, the owner, the clerk at the desk <coughs> said to him, he says, Rabbi, can you do me a favor? He said, I have two young men, two young children, teenagers, concentration camp survivors. He said, they put to rest underground those that look much better than these boys. He said, they used to come, they come to work every day, except Saturday, they won't come with our truck, they, they walk. He said, they wouldn't taste a thing in our, in our hotel. They used to eat, but then they discovered that the bread is made the sharding is lard, so they wouldn't even taste anything. He said, would you maybe talk to them? Can you do something for them? He said, certainly. He sums them on the loudspeaker. He takes a look. He did not exaggerate at all. My goodness, their eyes, they were, it was flesh and the skin and bones. Their eyes were hanging out on their side and so, uh, bulging out of their so, uh, sockets. And he quickly opened up his, his, his suitcase. He took out whatever rations he had, chocolates, nash, nourishing food, whatever. He said, Rabbi, we're not interested in that. He said, close the suitcase. He said, I'll tell you what I'm interested in. He said, I'm 15 years old. He said, I saw the Nazis murder my parents in my presence. He said, I didn't. I'm 15. I'm two and a half years after my mystery. I never put on film. Would you have a parent film that I could put on? He, he summoned all the courage and strength he had to withhold tears, not to break up these, these teenagers, and he gave them the, the film to put up. I finished speaking, tell this, I said, young man, I said, this is what today's day is all about. I finished speaking, this Bob Rochosid, who speaks a, a classical English, gets up. He said, I want to say something about Bar Mitzvah you don't know. Now, if you know these Russians, their attention span is about this big. And what's he going to get up to say? What, what to keep their interest? What, what are they interest? What he has to say? I don't know why I let him do it, but let him get up. He gets up and says, "Jim, my dear bar mitzvah boy, if I could have bar mitzvah like you, I'd be happiest man in the world." I was bar mitzvah in Auschwitz. He said, "We were two hundred and fifty in our family. I'm the only one that's left. Besides me, the only thing I had a remnant, anything from my family." was my father's <coughs> film, which were his father's, which his grandfather's. And I always kept them here in my back pocket. I managed to escape from the Nazis, and I joined the Russian army. He said we were pursuing the Nazis, and he said, and we didn't have any regular barracks or what to live like human beings to bathe or what. Whenever we passed the stream, we got undressed, we went to the stream, refreshed ourselves, continued marching, pursuing the Nazis. He says, I, after, and I always check to see if the film are here in my pocket. He says, after one thing stops, when I got undressed and I, I, was, I went to bathe myself, so I, uh, we marched on. About a mile or two later, I checked my pocket. Oh, to my horror, the film are not here. I turned to the commander. I said, commander, I, said, I lost something that's dear to me than life. I must go back. I'll make it quickly. I might go back and I got to search those, search it. He said, you turn around. He says, we're pursuing the Nazis. We're not going to leave any trail. You go back and I'll shoot you. He said, shoot me, do whatever you want. I don't care. And he broke out into tears. The tears softened the Russian, the hardened Russian commander. He softened him. And, and uh, he not only did he let him go back, but he sent with him two other soldiers to make it as quickly as he could. They turned around. It went. It didn't take him long. They found it too. The war ended, he moved to, he started, and they're sitting there, they're not even breathing, the Russians. They're not breathing one, more, one, one breath, they're listening to the whole story. Then he says, he says, the war ended, I, I moved to Paris, I made friends there, they introduced me to a young lady, we were married, it was a year after the Chaz, two years, three years, we didn't have a family yet. So they recommended, referred me to some big gynecologist, a big specialist, my wife should see, so he sits down with my wife and he's discussing with her, her, her background and everything. So she told me, yeah, what do you do during the war? 
she said she was together with 700 girls in the munitions factory in Leipzig. And every morning, the doctor there would give them some kind of a potion that's supposed to make them sterile. Doctor said, you don't tell me anymore. He said, I have very tragic news for you. He said, I'd love to help you, he says, but I examined already 200 girls. We tried everything medically possible. He says, you have to make peace with the thought you will not be able to raise a family. You won't have any children. Here he dreamt and he hoped that from all the ashes, when the Nazis took away everything from them, that he was going to rebuild a family. And here, like the whole world, collapsed on him. So he, two years later, he was telling us to everybody, he told us, two years later, he moved to America, he says, and three years later, they found some doctor in New York. Today, he says he has 30 grandchildren in Yerushalayim. Yeah. So the end of the story is that this one who he said he knows all about the bar mitzvah, he has a knife. From this, from this Monday bar mitzvah, he, he was so nisoyer, his whole family were in touch with him still today. He's a shemitary mistress. He down the streets on today, he puts on film, and then he keeps the kosher home. All from here, from the Labor Day Bar Mitzvah. Now, now he's gonna say the I thought you want to. You want to share?